that's no, that's fine. I should have said something in my email as a reminder. Hey, how are you, bro? I have got 1010, and I would like to call to order the meeting of the Financial Planning and Supervision Commission for the City of Norwood. Mayor Schneider. Present. Council President Miracle. Here. Mr. Schwartz. Here. Mr. Shepard. Here. Uh, Mr. Von de Haar, uh, asked to be excused. He has a conflicting meeting at work. Ms. Longnecker. Here. And Ms. Hanrahan is here. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the prior meeting's minutes. And we do, we do have a quorum. We do. Um, I would ask for Ms. Longenecker to abstain uh, since she was not at the last meeting. Um, at this point, I would take any amendments to the minutes. These were taken from hastily written notes, so. Oh. Do I, I have make a motion that we uh, accept and approve the minutes? Okay. Uh, Mayor moves. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Shepard seconds. Okay. I'll call the roll. Mayor Schneider. Yes. Council President Miracle. Yes. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Ms. Longenecker. Abstains. Ms. Hanrahan. Yes. Uh, we're on to the next item of the agenda, which is a discussion and approval of the Public Works Commission loan. Um, I do have that in your materials. Uh, what I don't have is, and, and what you should know, I can find it, is the ordinance the city council did here and approve this loan. It was ordinance 44 um, of councils. Anna Mary, did you want to talk about this and maybe, what is your name again? I'm sorry. Marcus. Marcus. Marcus Patterson. Marcus. And maybe Marcus can add some. Okay. Uh, in front of you is the, pro is the uh, uh, project grant loan agreement that would be with the Ohio Public Works Commission. Uh, and in the back part, there is a promissory no note, a part of, which is part of this project. Um, so they're working with uh, Ohio Public Works to get, I believe, one of your street uh, projects completed, and, and, and this is, they've gotten some different uh, monies along with this. The promissory note uh, is a debt instrument. Uh, it would be a 0% financing, uh, which can be done through Ohio Public Works, uh, which is great for any municipality or government entity within the city or within the state of Ohio. Um, as you can see, the promissory note is around 490000 and fifty dollars. Uh, I believe it's a twenty-year term. Once it's complete, they would not start paying this until the project's complete, and OPWC has closed the project to start paying of the loan. I believe it's either a one or two payment a year. I think it's two. I think so too. Um, which is very typical for a high public works. Uh, it's a great opportunity for them to uh, borrow money at zero percent uh, and, and still have. It, time to pay it off and then use monies for other projects as well. So I, Marcus or the mayor can ex, you know, expand upon that and what the project is going to be. Uh, but because it's a debt instrument, it had to be passed by council and then it has to come to, in front of the commission for approval as well. I just have a couple questions. Sure. Uh, it's, it's in some sense titled as a grant slash loan. Mm -hmm. Is there any sense in which this is actually a grant? 
I think because um, the way I, I have construed it in my head anyway is that because Public Works is actually contributing 94 percent towards the project. Oh, the that's other their grant. It, not the, it's the got it. And then the um, local government's part is in a loan, so they can distribute that over short okay. over actually a lengthy period of time. That makes sense. My second question is related to your answer. Um, I can't do the math that in which the OPWC grants 1.3 million to cover 94 percent of the project and the loan is four hundred ninety thousand dollars there's an appendix B that kind of uh, it's on the last page it should be it, it has the breakdown of the project financial resources oh I see the one three five four the one point three million dollars includes the four hundred ninety thousand dollar loan got it thank you mm-hmm Thanks, April. Anything else? Yeah, okay. The only thing that I, I would add um, is that what we are doing today is act, actually a retroactive approval, if you will. Um, whenever we have debt, it should come to the commission first. So I would just ask that in the future, if you've got a situation like this and it's short turnaround, call me, email me, whatever, and we'll make it work. Um, you know, actually, I'm trying to think. I didn't have it readily at my hands. I, if if memory serves me correctly, I think Jim had even signed it before it went to council. Mm. No? Mm -mm. Okay. I don't think it was signed for council, really. Yeah, the document oh, I had. Oh, you're, you're, you're right. Because we had thought that it had cleared council with the previous administration because of the timing uh, of when, we, when the application was. But you're, you're right. Okay. Yes. For the application. Right. And, and okay. we recognized that clearly. It was made very clear to us. Okay. 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 Uh, any other questions? I'm glad we had we had talked about the need or the the desire to get funding from Public Works Commission. So I'm glad that you were able to get in on one of the rounds of funding. So that's good to hear. Thank good you. to hear. Yeah. I did have one more question. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back to his question and the 94 percent. I'm just not following the math. I, I'm fine with the loan. No, so no, no. No problem. Maybe the 94% doesn't mean anything, but 94% of what? Well, you've seen this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, so the, what I was confused about is I thought that was the grant. That's the grant, and that's the loan, and they add up. It is. But your question is. Is it? Yeah, it's it's the it's ninety four percent of one point four four one, which is the total one point the total cost. Right. So it's ninety four percent of one million four forty one. Oh, okay. Which is the one three five four six fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then of that, we're paying like I don't know forty percent of that. But 490 compared to 1.3 is not 6%. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, I can help because this is my same point. Mm -hmm. I think I can help. Okay. Provided, so the total cost of the project is the 1441. Yes. 94% of that is the 1354. The 1354 is made up of the $490,000 loan mm -hmm. and the $864,000 grant. So all of that's coming from OPWC. Norwood has to come up with 86350 in cash, which I suspect if we did the math would be 6% of the 1441. Okay. 
So they're saying basically we're covering ninety four percent of one point four four one and however we break that up. Some of it is a loan and some of it's a grant. But they're putting all the money up front and then we're paying back a portion. Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. No, I know. I was fiddling around with the numbers and I was having difficulty coming up with that as well. It's a it's just a it's, it's a, a new math it's once a again. Little, it's a little goofy, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um one of the responsibilities of the uh, commission is to approve any um, indebtedness of the city of Norwood. Um, I would ask for a motion to approve. Quick, sir. Yes. One more quick question. Sure. Is, are we putting up anything if we fail to pay the loan? What, what would happen? Is there any collateral? Uh, I mean, no, the there is not. And, up, so. and I'll tell you, we have had um, a commission that has been, has fallen behind. Uh, OPWC has legal authority to renegotiate. So in, an, in a, a normal, an average loan, what would that be? That would normally be lowering of interest and maybe an extension of terms. In OPWC's case, they would just extend the terms. So say if there were financial difficulties halfway through, 10 years that had elapsed, what they could do at that point is, okay, we understand you're having difficulty. We want to help you out. Let's take what the remainder that you owe and give you another 20 years to pay it back. Sure. So I have seen them do that. But as far as actual collateral, just, really no nothing. Fault. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can I respond to that too? Sure. Um, the good thing... A very positive thing is we've never had, that, as long as I've been here, we've never had that issue. But as you stated, working with them, they are they work very well mm -hmm. with the city of Norwood. As, as, again, as long as I've and I've been here 12, going on 13 years, so good working relationship. The other thing is, I do believe that this project was built into the recovery plan because this will be paid from fund two, so it has been planned. Now the payment, I think originally was we were going to pay it outright but when they had the opportunity to do a 20-year payback on it then they went with that. that that you know you'll have to pay that so much going forward but that allows you to use resources as you have right now for other things that are definitely needed as well so um, in that instance it's a, a great way to extend what you can do now sure. does that make sense yeah you're buying a lot so of time. that's the other You're thing. percent interest I mean it's a it's a Tremendous deal. Right. Yeah. So that's the other part because it, it is part of the fund that we monitor for fiscal and, and stuff. And so the, it is being paid. It will be paid back by fund too. But I just wanted to make you aware that this was planned and yeah, no, the project is just being paid differently. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yep. So it gets done and it gets done a lot cheaper for the city, which is yeah. always a good thing. So I, I would again ask for a motion to approve. Mr. Schwartz moves. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Shepard seconds. On the roll. Mayor Schneider. Yes. Council President Miracle. Yes. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Ms. Longenecker? Yes. Ms. Hanrahan? Yes. Okay, we're on to report of the financial supervisor. Okay, so you have the packets on your table, and plus they were emailed out. Uh, a is our statement of cash position. Uh, the first three funds are what are in the recovery plan, which is the general fund, street, and state highways. Those are positive at this time. There are outstanding encumbrances, which are expected expenses for throughout the rest of the year. Um, I wanted to point those out, so they're looking good. On the back of the page, uh, I was trying not to kill as many trees, uh, so I did front and back. Uh, we have a couple other funds I wanted to point out. Uh, the water fund, which we've talked about in the past, is still positive. Uh, we have two new funds uh, since the last time we've spoke. One is the Board of Health, which is Fund 55. Uh, there was a change in Ohio Revised Code uh, statutorily that uh, city de health departments had to be re-looked at. 
They are now considered their own legal entities, which then changes how they're supposed to be uh, dealt with within the financial world and reports. So now they are a component unit of the city, and therefore parts of this now are going to have to be within its own new fund. Um, there are, the health commissioner is going to be uh, an employee of the health department, and, and that expense is going to be showing here as well as some other material supplies contractual, and the revenue sourcing will be moved there. That will be also updated in the next recovery plan for 2021. Uh, at this time, we're not going to change that. Uh, we did the uh, report that was done for the city for 2019 had to be changed because it was required for 2019, and we worked with the city and the auditors at that time to get that fixed. So that is a new fund for this year. It is negative right now, mm -hmm. but not all the monies that were supposed to be moved were moved by the end of August. They, will, they were moved in September, and it's positive right now. It's projected to be positive by the end of the year. Uh, which was one of our questions that we had back after looking at this. Uh, so it will not be negative by year end. And then the other fund I wanted to point out is uh, Fund 96, which is called the Nor Norwood Coronavirus. Basically, this is the COVID oh. CARES Act monies. Um, this is through August again. Uh, these are some of the mo monies that they have received for di different functions throughout the city and the expenditures to date that they had had for uh, the CARES Act. I know that they, some stuff I've seen for September, they've got more money and they've, they've expended more. Uh, if you have any questions on that, I know the mayor or Marcus, because Marcus sent me a bunch of stuff about uh, the CARES monies Walmart. this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and then some more opportunities that the mayor has brought to our attention that um, to use for the CARES Act money. Uh, we're going to talk about CARES Act money when we get into some of the expenditures. That's the other reason why I wanted to bring it up uh, okay. now. So is there any questions over the funds right now? Which fund was that? What number? Fund 96, it's almost clear to the bottom. Okay, got it. Okay, if there's no questions on that, we'll go to the revenue, uh, which is B, a one page. Um, this is recovery plan estimates versus actual through August, so we'd like to see 67% collected or more. Uh, I'm going to point out a couple of these in the general fund. Uh, if you have more questions, let me know. Property taxes, you get them twice a year. The second mm -hmm. half has not been received. We will receive that mm -hmm. in September. It wasn't received in no. August. Okay. So we've only seen one half. We'll get the rest of it. Okay. Uh, municipal income tax, um, I get projections on this monthly. I do believe finances as well. Right now they're on target. Uh, they are projected to stay on target. Uh, a lot of the reason is there are several that are working at home in several businesses, but there is a, a, a ruling in place by the governor that you still pay where you worked and not where you live, and that's still in effect. How that will affect going forward is an unknown, and we do not know when that order will be uh, null and void. I think it's 30 days after he says it's done, then it takes into effect. So. Uh, I just I know that you know you hear a lot of people working at home. How's that affecting places? And it's really not yet. We're going to see that probably next year yeah. across the state. So uh, I wanted to point that out. Uh, hotel tax. We were afraid that this one would be lower this year because of the COVID so pandemic. Uh, they got the third their third installment paid to them, which was really the second quarter of this year. So that's like the heat of everything going on. April, May. June and it was significantly yeah. lower uh, than we had originally you know thought it's going to be low this year mm -hmm. uh, things are starting to open up and stuff so that that should increase some but we'll just have to watch trends on the hotel um, another one would be fees licenses and permits uh, that's really where your building permits are again lovely COVID uh, a lot of people weren't doing permits or work, therefore that has really decreased from uh, prior years and even last year. Um, we're watching to see if it upticks uh, going into the last half of the year and into next year. Uh, fines and forfeitures is down some. That's the traffic tickets in the police department. Um, I know around me the traffic was nothing compared to what it oh, normally yeah, is because people were staying home and not on the roads. You don't have people on the roads, there's less likely you have people speeding. So the traffic tickets are down because of that. 
Uh, and investment income is down. Uh, there's less balances in Star Ohio right now. With uh, It takes so many days to get it moved back over so it's available into the regular checking account to then make expenditures and some projects are being done and they want to make sure that there's enough money in the bank to make sure that they have payment and nothing comes back insufficient. And then other, uh, they received a $225,000 BWC refund. Mm -hmm. We talked about this when we did the recovery plan. That is not a for sure money. Uh, they have gotten it in several years, the BWC refund, as many municipalities, uh, but it's not a for sure bet, so we don't allow them to estimate that, but they still got it, which they have gotten it in the past. So mm -hmm. we're close to target. Uh, if we had had property taxes in by now, we would yeah. be fine. So uh, I have no concerns at this time, especially since income tax is still staying on target. Uh, I do, you know, that's something we should talk about for next year. There's a lot of unknowns right now about mm -hmm. next year. And then the street and state highway funds uh, are above predictions. Uh, the gas tax and MVL monies kind of went up. Uh, and so we're, we're seeing that uh, this year. So our estimate might have been a little low, but uh, we're getting more money. So that's good. Any questions over revenues? Yeah, a couple quick questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the investment income, you just basically were, um, we have less money that we're accruing interest on. Yeah, less money in Star Ohio right now. Because we earmarked it for other stuff and we mm -hmm. want to make sure we have it. Okay, and then just on the percentage column, is that, is that supposed to be August? Percentage yes. received? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I assume so. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any other questions? Just a comment. Um, this is really great. <laughs> I don't know how many local governments are in this position. Um, we had really anticipated the hit going to the locals, um, but Anna Mary is correct. It's all in the income tax, and that's going to be... That's going to be interesting to follow. I have no idea how it's going to play out. Um, I, I would, just the ability of businesses to handle that, instead of paying taxes on income based on where they are, and then turning to paying taxes on where their people are living, are working from home, is probably a huge administrative nightmare. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out, so we'll see more. We'll find out more. Anything else on revenues? <coughs> so attachment C, can everybody still hear me? Yeah. The expenses. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so again, I printed front to back for this. Um, normally, I go through these. I know, I think Mr. Shepard asked last time, like, I only went over the ones that were over, which this time you're only two, I think, or, well, I don't count the bottoms because they're all paid for on the, on the six of seven. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know you asked for more information for the ones that were under. Uh, do you just want to ask me questions on this? Or you want me to go over it? I do have answers for what's under. I don't know. This is a little. I don't I'm, normally I'm happy do it this for way. You but just to lead. Um, I, I don't think I ever received this via email. This is my first time seeing it. Did, okay. Did everybody else receive it, and I just missed it? Okay. No, I don't okay. Know. Well, then I'll just go through things. If I don't hit a department you want to uh, talk about, just uh, let me know. We'll do it this way. <clears throat> Okay, so on the first page of one of seven, uh, there's none that are uh, tracking over uh, the budget amounts at the end of August at this time. We have several that are below. Um, we kind of talked about this last time. COVID kind of hit. Uh, there's some issues with we thought we'd, the city would have people in place by a certain time, and then that's taken longer, or we haven't filled positions. And then we have the, which if anybody needs, I have with me, uh, we have the capital plan that was in there, and there is a lot of extensive work to be done, and some of that has had to change and, and been moved or, or pushed off until later in the year, uh, and the city can talk about that more. So overall, that's really what's happened in several departments. Uh, example, city council. 
Uh, it's at 45%, which is lower than 66%. So we want them 66% or lower because they're expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, they had $20,000 in here for contractual work to bind their minutes and, and ordinances. Okay. That has not happened yet. Uh, actually, it's not even encumbered at this time. And in talking with Jim Stith, uh, that's going to be coming in this month to go ahead and have it encumbered, and it may be even lower than what was originally projected. So that would be one of the reasons why this is so low, because everything else is tracking on target. 20000 in that budget eats up a lot of the percentages for the total for the department. Um, another one, marriage court, clerk of courts. So the court was closed for part of the pandemic or on a shortened schedule. Uh, they do pay for a magistrate, and the magistrate is paid based upon court appearances and such under a contract. So if you have less court, you have less cost. So therefore, what is, was expected for this year will not be as much as they would have to pay like they would for a normal year. So that's another example. Um, Law department at the bottom. Outside legal fees is much lower than expected. This is more because the union contracts were actually done and finalized in the early part of the year. Uh, we were not sure when that would occur, so they, we planned accordingly to make sure there's enough legal fees there to cover those negotiations, mm -hmm. and, and that's much lower than expected. Okay. Any others on that page you would like me to hit? If not, we'll go to page two. Um, okay, the treasurer's department. Uh, there was a part-time position that was estimated to be filled. That position still has not been filled to this day. Uh, so that, therefore, it's below what was estimated. Uh, the earnings tax department. Um, it's really the refunds are lower than expected, and, and that's kind of a crapshoot, to be honest, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how people um, fill those in and how it's dealt with. Uh, the civil service, so it's way low. It's not a huge department. Uh, but here's where they pay for the multiple tests that people have to take to, you know, potentially become employed with mm -hmm. the, um, the city. Um, there haven't been as many tests that needed to be given for several different reasons. Uh, some positions haven't been filled like we kind of talked about. So that's being, it's a lot lower than expected at this time. Uh, okay, the bottom one, the service director's office, it is exceeding, however, there was a separation pay, a large separation pay for an uh, ex-employee that was paid out, uh, and so that we should be able to come back into to line or we'll, we'll fix it within the budget. Mm -hmm. Any others on page two? Page three, transportation. Uh, this is definitely a COVID hit. Uh, gas prices, as you all know, went down. Uh, there are several services that were kind of <clears throat> slowed or stopped within the city and within the state as well. Uh, so the amount of fuel consumption plus the price being much lower is why this is tracking so much lower. Normally it's like right on target. Um, usually we're pretty close to what that's going to be. So it definitely is a uh, COVID reaction. Mm -hmm. Um, the building department, okay, so we've had less permits come in. Those have to be reviewed. We haven't had as many to review, so we have less contractual on those. Plus, I do believe they've changed who they're using uh, for this as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's another hit from COVID. So you re we don't have as much revenues, but offside is we've reduced some of the expenditures for the same reason. Auxiliary police department. Uh, they were supposed to have three individuals in that department. Uh, they had two last year, one was moved, so they had two hirings they were supposed to do this year. One happened in March, one happened in August. That was not the timing that was originally estimated. Uh, therefore, um, <coughs> it's less than it was projected for. Now, those same in positions are throughout the rest of the recovery plan, so in future years it should be closer to what was projected. We're adding two more later next year. Okay, thank you. I, I forgot about that. Um, the fire administration department, I do believe that was the timing on the hiring of the fire chief and when it was estimated. 
Any questions on three? Page four. Uh, fire department uh, shows exceeds. However, they paid for the ladder truck in here, which we discussed at the last uh, meeting, which was over eighty thousand. Uh, they also have paid uh, debt that's due for the year, so that's going to push you over a little bit, and it's really close. It's sixty-six, sixty-seven point eight eight. So, EMS department. All right. So, wow. This one seems a little weird. There's two things going on. They were to buy an ambulance, which is still in the works. It's $230,000. Uh, they're supposed to be getting it before the end of the month, I believe, and then they'll make the payment on that. The other thing is uh, CARES Act monies was also used mm -hmm. within the EMS. Uh, so some of the supplies and some other stuff, which if you have questions on that, you can ask, uh, was moved out of here and under and spent under the CARES Act monies under Fund 96. This is one of the reasons why I pointed that out. So um, this will definitely, it should be below what it was projected unless there's more uh, items that are needed before the end of the year. Okay. Uh, community center, towards the bottom, uh, we're there to hire a, a center director. That hasn't happened. It's been really limited during parts of the year and what you know the center could do. Uh, and so that kind of got pushed off for now. Uh, so that's definitely going to be less than what was uh, projected uh, because of the timing of hiring and stuff. Um, community development has not had expenditures yet. Uh, this has kind of been back and forth. They are doing contracted work, uh, and that has not been, I don't know if you've had services yet or not, but uh, I know that that's been um, put in for a budget. So that's page four of seven. Mm -hmm. Page five. Public lands and buildings. Okay, if, if you have the recovery plan or have looked at it or whatever, this was the big, one of the big areas for capital plan work. Um, and some of that's had to be moved, changed, whatever direction, and, and you, you know, the mayor can address this or Marcus or whoever. Um, I know that they're looking at this and, and potentially changing the needs because some things have changed with COVID hitting and what needs to be priority versus and that happens throughout the year. Parks and playgrounds is also one of those two. It had a lot of capital plans too. I know several of these are still in the works and they haven't done them yet. I should say that for both of them. Uh, there's purchase orders out there to have the work done. It's just not when I think timing has been pushed back on some and then and, and reassessing priorities. Um, health department, we've kind of talked about. Uh, the commissioner, health commissioner was going to be was supposed to be paid out here is now going to be in fund 55 uh, and then um, some of the other um, contractual supply, supplies and materials are not going to be paid in the general fund they're getting paid out of that fund 55 any other things on page five page six recreation uh, there is to be a hiring of full-time rec director that did not occur uh, the poll was ran, from what I was told, mostly with part-time and seasonal help. Uh, that is a huge reduction of what was really planned. Uh, the, the, what I've been told, the director position is to be slated and uh, filled by next year, uh, which is how the recovery plan looks for the outgoing years. Um, okay, and then the last couple, the couple of retiree benefits, retirees, and the C9 stuff, they kind of all go together. So under the new retirement benefits that they approved a year or two ago, uh, they made that in full. That's why you see it's you know almost 100% paid. Yeah, they did. They paid the entire amount we thought we would. Uh, the retirees' health care is the last part of the old retiree system they have. So we knew that th this is much lower than it has been in the past, and the same for the C9. Um, and so it's just the straggling payments need to be done, and it's supposed to be over with by the end of the year, with how it's set up. And then debt on the general fund, yeah. uh, there's only interest left to pay on it. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the general fund? And then the last page, seven, is the uh, street and state highway funds. Uh, which is where the uh, contractual work for the streets are. Uh, if you look, there is some encumbrances out there to do some work. We have some timing here. Uh, and then we've also changed some things because you're going to do some debt. 
that we just passed on the OPWC. So some of those expenses are going to be out 20 years instead of now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on expenses? If not, we'll go to D, which is the bank reconciliation. The biggest thing I'll point out here is that reconciling items still being researched is down to 4,600. Yeah. Uh, the, what is he, I guess, is he the deputy treasurer? Or the, no, he's a, I guess he's the tax administrator, I guess, Chuck. Uh, he and I uh, talk monthly. I haven't been able to come down because uh, of some, time, some issues uh, to come down and work through some mm -hmm. of the stuff that he has, but uh, uh, we're hoping to do that in the next month as well. So, but it's much lower and, and being looked at monthly so it's just a out of curiosity at what point do you call it quits normally we like to see the same reconciling amount for several months really okay. like six months to 12 months but uh, and then we can say well it, it, it would take We've too many exhausted. resources now to find that out and then we could ask for council to do a one-time more uh, resolution or ordinance to say we're just going to fix it within the general fund. It has to be general fund because it's unrestricted money. So, okay. So. Got it. Just curious. Didn't know. Good though. It's gone down. Just yes. good. What did it start at? What was it a year ago or two years ago? I'd have to look. I know it's been in the 6,000s before. Yeah, it sounds right. In the 20s or? It might or have been the 20s in the like first a few years part. Ago. Yeah. Can I make a uh, comment towards? Okay. Um, working with VIP, there is um, they have a product that they we're, we're actually excited about and trying to push. We just have to get um, in contact with Tim Maloney to get on board. And what it will do instead of using Excel, it will allow VIP or and us to actually extract straight from the bank and within the VIP we can map each other. So if there's any voided oh. checks, any outstanding checks, basically everything will be live and no more on Excel. So the way they explain it to me, um, that will cut down considerably on any outages such as this. Yeah. And if there, if there is, it can be easily identified. So that is something uh, me and Jim are, are trying to hopefully push. Um, if we can just get uh, Mr. Maloney on board haven't had contact with them, but if so, I believe, according to what they're saying, what how he presented to us, that will be a great asset to us. So, and it's already included within our VI. There's no, it wouldn't be an oh. extra charge. It's already included within it. It's just they just need to go. So VIP wow. is software solutions, oh, so which yeah. is the new software they're going to their for their accounting system. Right. Yeah. So just yeah. so. So when we do our bank rack, so we do them monthly? Yes. Like at the end of the month? Yes. Okay. Would it, uh, would it behoove us to maybe look at on the main operating account or whatever account has all the activity flowing through it, doing like a daily reconciliation? Okay, so I've looked at this myself. This is not an easy reconciliation. Yeah. A lot of it is because of how money's come into several of the other accounts. So you got credit card stuff, you got mm. uh, Dropbox, you got, and then you got timing issues in there. Uh, the other thing is uh, there's several bank accounts, which some are needed, maybe some aren't. Uh, then you have the accounting side of the world, and it is very antiquated. And it's really hard to pull stuff out and really match up month to month and then to the bank account, to be really honest with you. I'm also very hopeful, even if they wouldn't use that, which I would hope you would, uh, that software piece, that the new software will be much easier to go through and find what the discrepancies are. Uh, a lot of the issues is the antiquated system, to be really honest, because I have a hard time, yeah, I have a hard time pulling stuff out and trying to match. And then we've had our staff work on a couple of months as well, uh, 
and you know I can my staff I can say well, you got to work on this and they they you have to do that a whole day and, and you know we may take phone calls and stuff but I take more of those than my staff do and it can take two to three days to do one month and we still can't find it what type of software are they on right now software solutions but oh. it's an old version of oh. the software okay. so they're going from what is it 15 years old 20 Pretty years much, old yeah. to the most up-to-date version which is one of the reasons we push for a new software. Well, that and plus the new administration that works with software solution, they are not trained on what we yeah. have now. That's true. Yeah, it's so any questions you have, if he calls us SI, they, they have to call an old retired person if yep. he's available to answer the questions of that old software. That's how, how antiquated it is. I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> so. no, I was just thinking, I mean, I, I work for a few companies that have done the daily reconciliation. You get to the end of the month and you're like, it ties, it's good, we're done. And you don't have two or three days of hunting and pecking and you close faster and, you know, you do a little bit of work every day, mm -hmm. but you just feel good about the numbers that you're working with and you're not pulling your hair out, chasing down $4,000 or whatever it is and random transactions. So mm -hmm. maybe it's something we can look forward to trying to do once we get the new software and it's just part of the daily routine, and then that's a big chunk of your, your, you know, your clothes kind of put to bed. Yep. Plus, you know what it is at any given point in time. Mm-hmm. So, just a thought. Agreed. The only other uh, thing I would add, and, and uh, President of Council may be getting to that, we are coming down, my staff is coming down next Tuesday, uh, and we're doing okay. a major test of uh, several of the 90-day or report on accounting methods okay. uh, comments as well. So that's it. Okay, great. Um, any, no further questions? of the auditor staff. Um, old business, new business. The only thing that I really wanted to mention is the urgent need for a secretary. <laughs> um, it was a cliffhanger this time out doing the, the minutes. Is there any way perhaps that someone from the city could take the tapes? And I don't need a, 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 the when they're posted on the Norwood channel. And maybe it doesn't have to be word for word, seriously. But if they could maybe come up with some something close just to commemorate or, or memorialize what went on in the meeting. I talked to, emailed the uh, Attorney General's office, and while they said yes, the, um, the channel taping could be used as minutes, the difficulty would be in how do you approve those and also the fact that the retention of those. And because we don't control that, we can't use, we the commission can't use that in lieu of our minutes. So, yes. Is there any way we could, uh, I guess, I don't know what the parameters are for minutes or what they're supposed to look like or... Um, could we just simplify the minutes and have limited detail? I mean, I my company has a lot of board meetings, more than we would choose to with mm -hmm. with Japan and back and forth. And I do the minutes, and they're basically just boilerplate. And it's we discussed the 2020 third quarter budget, and we discussed X. Now, that's very extreme with pretty much no detail. But is there some happy medium we can maybe come to that says we don't need to say Probably. somebody mentioned this or somebody mentioned that? Maybe it's a page, yeah, instead of multiple pages and just yeah, I would gr agree with since you. We have the video record and all that. I mean, I don't know who consumes these other than us. Yeah, but uh, I, they, anybody could ask for them um, because they are public record. Um, but honestly, no one has asked me for. And is there it. a requirement on? How no. detailed or lengthy or no? What they Just need to basically be. that it would give a person who had not been at the meeting an idea of what went on at the meeting. 
so yeah, it could be more general. I, I have found that when I use, when I look at the Norwood Channel, I get too much in the weeds because it's all there. So um, we can definitely try that. But if you get any takers on that, please let me know. I'll, I'll talk to the administrative assistants in my office and see if we can work that into what they can do. And okay, maybe they can that would be out, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Anything else? Any other new business? Old business, rather. Um, I'd love to hear an update on Rita, but I bet one is coming. Um, I'll speak to that. Yeah, okay. Uh, in my report. Oh, in your report? Okay. Okay, so we'll go over that later. Anything else? Okay. All right. Um, report of the mayor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I like to say I'll keep it brief. Yeah, um, we have been working through the capital improvements project list, and as you saw, there's there's quite a few things in that public lands and buildings in different areas where we are we have uh, worked with contractors. We've gotten quotes. We'll see a lot of expenses or a lot of a lot of uh, those funds being used up here towards the end. It took a while to get through the COVID time where nobody was coming out and nobody was meeting to the point that people started coming out and looking at jobs and quoting. Um, so we're, we're moving forward with all of that. We've got two streets that are going to be started. Uh, the, the repaving starts this, actually this week they'll start posting. And then over the next couple of weeks they'll be working on those. Um, that's, that's Cathedral and Shanmore. Then we have the major project going on with uh, the, the quotes, actually, the, the RFPs out for the improvements at India Mound, Wakefield, Sheridan. We should have information back from them pretty quickly. Quite frankly, once they did the bid openings um, for the other two streets, it's only been two weeks, I think, since then to the start date. So, um, so they're sort of, they're sitting on equipment ready to go. We just have to, to release that stuff. Um, we, we feel like we've got all of everything with this final piece here um, for the, the grants, the grant loan agreement. We feel comfortable that we've got all, the, all our ducks in a row and that, that project will start. So streets is going to be a, a major part of it. And, and I'm thankful of that because as I was running for mayor, it seemed like every porch I went on to, everybody said, are you going to fix the streets? Are you going to fix the streets? And I got in a car with an Uber couple weeks ago and the first thing the uber driver said is the only thing bad about norwood's the streets he didn't know who i was from anyone but like, on, you know so so we are going to we're working on streets hopefully um we are going to to make even more improvements on streets over the next year we, we we've got the funding we've just got to make sure everything's in place and trying to maximize you know what the, what we can get out of it so those are big parts of it uh, we are working on city hall improvements, the police department, uh, the fire department, um, actually the city hall building, making improvements there, and we've got a lot, a lot on track there. The municipal parking lots have been upgraded. We're looking at the, the parking meter situation that we have. Um, we are looking at public works. We're making upgrades there, and we've purchased equipment to make them much more efficient and effective. Uh, one of those things being a hot patch trailer, which uh, is, is sort of an all-inclusive, uh, carries the, not only the materials, but also the supplies to apply the materials properly. So those are important parts of it. We have a um, software system called C-Click Fix, which will be Norwood 311, which is an application that you put on your phone. You'll be able to take a picture of a stop sign that's messed up or a street light that's not working or a pothole if you can find one you can take a picture mm -hmm. of a pothole but it goes directly to public works and they'll generate work orders from there and we'll be able to track it so that'll be a nice system we do have the website up with minutes from meetings with ordinances all of that went on the city's the new city's website so those are all important parts of it um a big part of, of one of the things that I had on my agenda for for the recovery and, and getting out of fiscal emergency was getting together a policy and procedure manual for mm -hmm. the city. And we worked with, with outside legal counsel and put together it's 170 pages. So we now have a policy and procedure manual that has been 
uh, approved by council. It is. Uh, it goes out to print in the next week or so, and then it'll go out to every employee within the city. Um, that sort of sets the standards of the of standards for fair play. Um, so that was a huge hurdle. I, I'm very proud to say that the auditor, the treasurer, the law director, all of us came together. We we worked together on this. We all had different edits to it, and uh, I think we came up with very good. Very good product that will help the city in the long term. I know that it was something that that is required here, but quite frankly, as an administrator, I, I don't see how the city has operated without one for so many years. It seems seems sort of you know hard to believe in this day and age that we did not have a good policy and procedure manual. So um, that's about it. I know there there have been a lot of questions between the auditor and Anna Mary, and April's been involved in in that. Um, and I, I've been trying to work with Jim to, to keep these things going. We have, I really am proud that the city, the elected city administration, the four different department heads are, are working together and talking, mm -hmm. and, and I think we're making great progress as it comes to that stuff. Then the, I guess the last thing, we had a council meeting last night, and our council meetings, we, we are getting a ton of work done at our council meetings. I don't care if it's 11 o'clock at night when we get home. <laughs> There's a lot of work that is being accomplished at those council meetings, a lot of good discussion. We have a really, what I would consider to be a, a council that works together. They are striving to make this city better every day. They have, I think they're on like, for this city, you know, we average probably 35 ordinances a year. I think they're on 55 right now, or 58, I guess, after last night. And they'll probably finish, they're probably going to finish a year with doing 75 ordinances, trying to get things squared away and, and putting everything in order. So, you know, kudos to them. And Ken's been a great president of council, keeping things going in the right direction. He's got a good staff, and I really appreciate that, too. So I'll, with that, I'll end my brief comments. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions of the mayor? I'd just say that's great to hear. Yeah. I mean... Kudos to you guys, and I didn't have any doubts, but um, where we've been to where we are, where we're going is pretty exciting. Definitely. Definitely. Ken. Thank you. I will keep my comments brief. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, my focus has been on the report on account yes. accounting methods and uh, uh, working with uh, Anna Mary. I would like to say that um, uh, Councilman DiNardo and his uh, finance committee team uh, working with Mr. Stith and uh, Mr. Maloney, we are, are making progress. As uh, Anna Mary had um, alluded to, uh, next week uh, we have, they're coming down on the 29th, so they will be begin the process of testing some of the uh, comments that we have submitted. So uh, next week I think uh, it's uh, six or so. Of the 34, uh, this is uh, you know, this is a work in progress. There's a, a lot of effort that's been going into this, and um, continuing that. Um, you had um, mentioned, Mr. Shepard, the uh, the Rita. Um, we had the um, presentation by Rita in June, uh, as Mayor Schneider had alluded to. Um, before last night, we were at 52 ordinances, uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of activity by the. Council and a lot of good work. So, um, council has not taken any action yet. Uh, I, I anticipate that to be imminent. I'm really pleased with the uh, uh, progress we're making with, uh, with the accounting methods. We've got a long way to go, but um, very promising. That's good to hear. Um... Those, those comments on the <laughs> report on accounting methods, one, I, it, it depends on the comment. You can go and kind of go through a couple of them pretty rapid fire, and then there's others that take an awfully long time to do it and do it well. So it, it can be one of those roller coaster rides to get that done. But once you're done, um, we've always felt that you, by, by addressing all those comments, 
you have really addressed the reason that the city went into fiscal emergency and by having those things in place like the procedural man, uh, manual um, your chances of going back into fiscal emergency are much slimmer so that's good to hear um, any idea about um, the Rita as to uh, just not uh, a matter of interest for the council at this no, point? I, I, I wouldn't or, say that. I, I okay. Would, I, or just working on a whole bunch of things like the capital? Yes. Okay. And, and one other comment I wanted to make. I know with the, uh, with the upgrade of the software, I think that will help us with several of our uh, uh, comments. That's true, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Great. And yeah, hopefully a lot of those control things are built into the software where it won't let you do certain things that are in line with mm -hmm. the procedures and policies you want to have. Mm -hmm. And no way to override. Right. Safeguards and, yeah. you know, se segregation of duties and all those things. Yeah, definitely. And automation. Yes. It does have a lot of segregation duties. When um, we first set it up, um, I had to pinpoint who would have access to mm -hmm. what and what they are, are allowed to do. Uh, so I work with them extensively on that, and um, everybody that I reached out to was good. So that's a work in progress. Right now, we are still in training. Um, actually, I have a training meeting tomorrow, mm -hmm. and our projected date to go live is November. Okay. And around that time, once we are trained, then we'll branch out to um, the department heads to get them up to speed as far as what their functions can do what they can pull and even uh, council members they have access to it as well so. okay will you be is the plan to run parallel programs for a while yes okay yes because Tell there is you a, say that there's a downtime I don't know um, how long it's going to be to get that everything integrated because they have to pull everything okay. from our old system and just in case something you know right. we'll still have that backup so yeah there okay is a downtime. good good Sounds good. Sounds very good. Any any questions, comments about Ken's report? Okay. Um, we are down to determining the next meeting date and time. And what some of you may remember is the receipt of two resolutions, one of which was the approval of the PWC loan, which we did. Uh, the other was to grant the commission's authority to the financial supervisors to act in our stead. And the reason being for this is um, there are several, I shouldn't say several, but there are documents um, that the commission is to approve, one of which is the appropriations measure. Um, for next fiscal year. So, and, and by approving, what we would be doing is looking at the appropriations measure, making sure it is not in conflict with the financial plan. Um, I, would ex I would expect that there may be some variances in between, um, which is why the, the plan isn't, necessarily by department, but as things develop, we just want to make sure that the city is staying within its means um, and the appropriations are not in contrast or conflict with the plan. Um, sometimes being in conflict with the plan isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if the appropriations are in conflict, that automatically then turns to a discussion of we need a new plan. Um, those appropriations, I, Ken, I don't even know what your timeline would be. I, I'm thinking even possibly October to start thinking about that in finance committee because they have to be passed by council in time, and then we would have to approve those before January 1. 
Yeah, I, I would anticipate. Okay. So the next discussion is also, um, we have a financial recovery plan which is looking for an update in March every year. My thought was I am likely going to have difficulty being able to hold a meeting here before the beginning of next year. So we're <coughs> knee deep into our state budget right now. So it's going to be very difficult. My thinking was if we could have, if we would vote today to authorize the financial supervisors to look at, review the appropriations measure of the city to ensure that it was not in conflict with the financial plan, we would not impede the progress of the city and that come January 1, appropriations would be in place. My next thought was, when would we, bearing in mind that I, I likely would had, have difficulty getting to Norwood before the first week in February, because that's when our budget is due to the legislature. So then combining that and then looking towards the next deliverable that is due, which is a financial recovery plan, my thinking was if we set a date for our next meeting sometime at the end of February, at that point we would be presented with the new appropriations for the city, which the financial supervisors would sign off on for us, and perhaps at the same time, starting in January, if not earlier, the city could be working on updates of financial recovery plan. Does this sound feasible to either the mayor or at, council? At what point does the city get out of this, out of the fiscal emergency? Um, when we get the, well, from a financial viewpoint, you guys are looking great. You're looking great. Okay, so we're out today? No, <laughs> sorry. It, it's, those, it's those report on accounting me methods. Okay. It's the, addressing those comments and getting them all addressed. Okay. Now, so my thought is perhaps this would be our last financial recovery plan next year. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have to wait for year imbalances too. So we got to see where you end this year uh, to say if you stay positive. So it's then it's a three-part process that we have to look at. Uh, the report on accounting methods items need to be cleared or in major process, and, and there just can't be too many of those. I've discussed that before. We want a divorce, not a separation, because if we separate, I'm going to still have to come back and monitor you for two years. And if you don't clear them, then we're going to put you back in, potentially. The other piece is uh, we, step, we test all six steps again that um, are the fiscal emergency mm -hmm. stuff to make sure you don't qualify for any of that or fiscal watch which right now you shouldn't, uh, but without a test, I can't say that. And, and we have to do that at the year end, and I think a couple of months later as well. The other thing is, is that, which is what the recovery plan will be, you have to forecast five years and show that you're going to be positive in all five years. If you're going to show that you're going to be negative in any of those years, then there's work still to be done, really, and then therefore we wouldn't allow you to come out. So it's, it's a three-step process. So... Um, we definitely have to see you go through this year and have positives all across the board, uh, no negative funds, um, unless there's an, a grant issue of some sort, which mm. you need to talk to me before we get to the end of the year. Uh, so, um, but that's really how you get out. And so it's our listed, office that does the report. You listed, you listed three things, but then I wrote down four things. So the test six steps is testing on the report of accounting methods. No. Testing oh, of the six okay. steps is what could qualify you for fiscal watch or emergency. It's the same it's test that they... Yeah, it, chapter 118. It's the same test they did uh, when, yeah, when you were declared in fiscal emergency. Correct. 
Okay, so clearly the city's goal is to get out, and when mm -hmm. you talk about the change that you're, you're the, the commission giving the authority over, how do, does that adversely affect us? Does that, is that good for us? The, and the question of our next meeting's not until February, so is February, you're saying February could potentially be a final meeting? No. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. Uh, if I led you to believe that, I apologize. Uh, I, was um, I was jumping to that conclusion, <laughs> hopefully. Um, it, what I was hoping to do is kill two birds with one stone, is to have a meeting in late February and not have to come back in March to approve a, f a financial recovery plan. If we, if the city would be able to work with the auditor staff, so that it, at the end of February, when we meet, the commission would get a recap of what what the appropriation measures are for the next fiscal year for the city, and would be presented a fiscal re, a financial recovery plan to be able to review and approve. Now, from their viewpoint, from the auditor's viewpoint, I'm thinking that if you're going to need to look at year end and a couple of months out, we'd be talking the year after. Or no. It could possibly be this. OK. Mm -hmm. Is it feasible to say that we could be looking at that in April or May? When you say ending balances, would you be talking 12 31 21? No, 12 20. Okay. Even before the 21 plan is complete? Yes, That's because they have a recovery plan in place right now. So we'll look at the appropriations for 21. And then what happens, uh, assuming all that goes as, as we hope and expect, what, what is our, um, do, we, do we need to keep doing a five-year plan just going forward, or once you guys are kind of out of the picture, there's no longer requirement for a five-year plan, and we just kind of do there's, what we There's no requirement by code, but I would highly recommend, and if you, you go to it. any of our trainings, especially at the local government official conference, and especially in the times we've had since 2008, and then now with the COVID pandemic, it is strongly and highly recommended that any entity do a five-year plan or three-year plan or some long-term planning process to you know that you're making decisions today that you're going to have money tomorrow. later to do other projects or you, you're not going to use up all your money or be in a deficit if you start on a you want to start a new department or whatever is that going to eat up all your reserves in two years so we highly recommend that you do Forecasting, not it wouldn't be really a recovery plan. It'd be more forecasting. Right. And then we highly and strongly recommend capital plans be done, and that's usually ten years out. And those change drastically uh, mm -hmm. as you go through the years. Like we've already talked about today, uh, that is strongly encouraged by our office too. We've had several um, um, trainings on that as well, uh, and, and and that just helps you know what you need 
what is coming and then you know there's always road work in most of our places and, and even at the cemeteries too because mm -hmm. there's roads in the cemeteries mm -hmm. as well there's always maintenance that needs to be done in some sort of infrastructure asset that you have so uh, where it's not required it's highly recommended and I think that and, and they can talk to it about so I've heard several comments come back to me that this is great we see what we have we see what if we do this what it's doing to us in two years and and where our balances are uh, and, and they can say I'm wrong or whatever, but I've heard other councils say that as well. So it's not a bad tool. They can change the tool uh, if they want to, uh, but I would strongly encourage them to have that in place. So after we leave, it's not required. So it's just so would, the requirement as part of is the five-year plan, would you recommend we do that indefinitely? Like that's just normal? Yeah. I would, yeah. yes. And yeah. Brad, let me assure you, these tools, the tools that we're using now, I recognize the strength of them and what it brings to the table. So during my tenure as the mayor, we will continue to do that. We will continue to work with the tools that have been presented to us, and we understand what it brings to So you don't have to worry about that for three years, you know, after this. Um, but, you know, what we are talking about, and I think Marcus would, would agree also, the software upgrades and the accounting methods and the different systems that are being put in place Hopefully, we'll be there 10 years, 20 years from now. Well, improved, updated, yeah, don't right. get me wrong. But there will be systems in place that we haven't had for years and years. There's no doubt that the city of Norwood has benefited greatly from the expertise that the auditors say, and, and you gentlemen have brought, everybody has brought to, with this organization. So it's, it's recognized, and I, I clearly will continue to do it. And I know that the auditor is continuing, you know, recognizes that too. We've got some great tools here. That we're putting in place let's let's keep them going absolutely the new vrp system i love it <laughs> uh it we normally have to do the forecast through excel which is fine i'm right. used to it i can do it but within vip it does it for you now we don't have to stick to that but it it gives you a good panoramic view of what ifs mm -hmm. so you can kind of play with and mm -hmm. as far as forecasts me and jim we we do that all day every day <laughs> All day, every day. So that's really uh, a norm practice for us. So yeah, I, I, I did a what the mayor just said. It's a must need. I don't see how any business honestly can thrive without doing it. That's <laughs> kind of ridiculous not to do it. Do we have any authority or how? That's what I'm getting at in the end game mm -hmm. is to make sure that this continues and that we do this level of detail work and forecasting. Do we have any power or would council have to, I mean, say we want to say we want to make sure this goes on indefinitely or for 20 years or whatever. Is there any way we can kind of make that happen, like legally? Like either city council I, I, votes in order I can speak to that. or we... we uh, Brad, I can speak to that. I was the city councilman and I, put, I asked for an ordinance to be put on that set specific guidelines, dates for when the budget is formulated and when it's brought to council, yeah. because I was head chairperson of the finance committee. And I said, it's ridiculous. I can't get, we can't even get the information. So you had the treasurer's office, the auditor's office, and the mayor's office that weren't working well together. And I said, I want to pass this ordinance that says, here's what we would do. And they said, you're a statutory government. You don't have the ability to tell the auditor or the treasurer or the mayor what they can or can't do. What you have to do is elect the right people that recognize the, the, the necessity of this and you move forward. That's the only way to do it. Unless the, you guys think there's something different. Because I tried to do just that years ago when I was a councilman. And I couldn't, it, wouldn't, it didn't work. I could show you the document. I've pulled it back up and looked at it. It's, yeah, that's my concern is that statutory you know, we kind of get uh, fat and happy and think, <laughs> ah, we got this. You know, and you get a little lazy and you fall back in your ways. Yeah. And so, again, I guess, does this committee have any power to require that for a five-year period or whatever that we vote that in and say, this needs to be done because we think it's, it's, it's an assessment? I wish, but we don't. Okay. Um, once we go away, we go away. The only um, other thing is... Um, we will miss you. <laughs> if you can't do an ordinance, uh, you may want to talk and see if you can do a policy, and then you would be breaking policy technically. Uh, that's another way, but I would definitely talk to legal because I'm not an attorney. So yeah, that's yeah, the only other that thing. But it has to be internal. Who would administer that policy? 
the mayor. The mayor doesn't have the ability to set a policy for the treasury, the elected treasurer or the elected audit. So well, and I understand. There are some things in code that require certain things, like some of the budget stuff is mandated statutorily, but it's one year. It's not five years, which is what you're talking about. So, uh, or even three years, just something to say, all right, at a minimum, we, we have to and will do this. And we're not relying on the people that understand it or, you know, um, as people move on, retire, get new elected mm -hmm. people. You know, they have say, different though, agendas or thoughts. Or, as you, you, get a, you create a new norm. So they've created a new norm. Mm -hmm. And so the citizens here at Norwood ha are really used to seeing some sort of plan, right, for five years. And now they're used to seeing a capital plan because they've had it for two years. So if that starts to go away, the biggest thing that you guys can do as citizens of Norwood is come to council meetings and go, why is this not being done? What's going on? I mean, that's the biggest power that you have as a citizen. So, you know, if that's stuff that you guys like to see and stuff, I, you know, I don't live here, but I would definitely come and say, well, why aren't you doing that? Or what's the problem or whatever? You still have to, you know, come back to what the citizens want and you, and you still have to answer to them. So once you start seeing a norm go away, you should start having more questions about why. So that's what okay. I would say. Sounds good. I agree. Our next okay. meeting's in February. Um, we should vote first to um, to authorize the um, financial supervisors to approve the appropriations on our behalf. Who, who are the actual supervisors? Um, it's a term that's actually given to the auditor of states off. Well, actually, I think by code, it is the auditor of state. And... The auditor of state then has the authority to delegate people on his staff to work for him. And so, be you two guys. so it's, it's, it's just like talking to Keith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is taped. He's just not going to watch this, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that technically. Quick question. Sure. Um, I don't see it on this. Okay. Um, were we to discuss the CARES Act today, or is this going to be on another meeting? Or I just had you prepared in case they had questions when I brought it up, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. We may want to at some later point just to see. Um, I would just be curious. Difficulties. I don't think anybody's going to know until the Fed start auditing. Quite frankly, I mean, the state's been keeping track of this and any, you know, um, we have the National Association of State Budget Officers as our professional organization, and they've been following this quite closely. Uh, we have now a grants management uh, area in our state agency that is specifically um, taking into consideration and monitoring the uh, the monies that have come in from CARES Act funding and how they have been distributed uh, just to ensure that they are on allowable expenses as we know those to be now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whether those allowable expenses change midstream, we'll see. Yeah. So, yeah, we might be interested at a later date okay. but yeah always always interested when we get money from other places right yeah, yeah. I, I would like to make a motion okay to give the financial supervisors the authority to take action on behalf of the financial planning and supervision committee commission excuse okay me, commission. great do I have a second second there's the Miss Longenegger seconds I will call the roll. Mayor I, I, Schneid. Sorry, I have a question. Sure. If we vote this through what we're proposing now, does that mean we're absolutely not having another meeting until February? Are they tied Correct. together? Yes. Okay. Because I'm a little concerned that, you know, we had our last meeting in June, and we won't have, we'll have one meeting between June and late February. That concerns me a little bit to 
go that long of a period without getting together and getting a the only, state of the union kind of thing? The only thing that I could possibly do if everyone has access to Microsoft Teams, I don't know if we all do. I do. Do I do. we? I do. Do you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I missed what. Oh, do you have access to Microsoft Teams? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> we could do a Teams meeting? Is that okay with the state to do it virtually? Because I know we've had issues with that in the past. I will, I will <laughs> check with our legal counsel. That is right. We have, and I believe that, I want to say it's a House Bill 197. Um, authorized us to be able, uh, not just our organization, but the state agencies, to do virtual meetings. But I will have them dig into that. But, but the, the question about virtual meetings is not, is not with having the virtual meeting, it's taking votes and taking action on a virtual meeting. If you pass, if, if this motion that's on the table is passed, and then we have a virtual meeting, they have they still have the abort yes. authority to make that change without it being a vote that's a, a closed vote yeah I guess I'm, I'm looking at two different things I'm looking at authorizing them to act on our behalf Correct. but I would also like to have a meeting between now and February um, similar to what we did today go over kind of the normal stuff I just that concerns me a little bit with the environment we're in economically and okay. the way the world is to go a full we, five months with nothing. Instead of a meeting, could we do a packet and send out information? Can we do that? It's just I would like to have a team, meeting. Do a Teams meeting. But, I mean, I is it, is there anything? I, mean, I, I share the same okay. interest, concern. Is there anything that keeps us from gathering to... I mean, I guess there's, we'd have to be on film or something you like without that. without sharing. Yeah, without sharing. I mean, I'd just, I'd just love an update. Well, there, you know, there, yeah, are, I mean, there are finance committee meetings that you can always go to where they do updates on these. But I, I'm not, I'm just throwing that out there. That's one thing that we can, you can do, but. City councils and townships, they all do virtual meetings, so what would be different? Well, that was that was as of this legislation that was passed. I'm going to have to look to see when it expires, if there is an expiration date, because the issue would be the sunshine laws. Because while we could meet virtually, we have to in some way uh, make it possible for the public. So we would the the problem then would be is how do we publicize that we're having this meeting on this Teams channel, and how do I add people to that Teams meeting? Could you like live stream it? I don't know how that stuff works, but. Uh, so when we do Teams, have you done Teams a lot with outside? So like Ken, Ken and I have done them. Okay. okay. So um, he's outside of my, he's not in my office. So I, I set it up in an email thing, it goes to him, and then there's a link. So he goes onto the link. Well, I actually have to allow him to come in right. uh, with that link, uh, and, and I have to accept him when he pops up uh, and stuff. So I don't know, like I, when I do, and I've done it with other people too, we have specific email and stuff, and it goes to them. I don't know how you do that part with having a public. I mean, I know, what, what, like, Chief McCabe is usually at them, so I'm sure mm -hmm. he would want to be on there, but what if somebody who isn't here but once or twice a year and they wanted to be a part of that, I don't know how you deal with that part. Could you invite a web address that was a public web address I'm, and say... That's over my head. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, mean, I don't know. This is all the only thing I can tell you is that it's been OBM policy, my state agency's policy, that that the mode of doing virtual meetings is teams so i can't deviate from any of the other type of like i think there's go webinar go to webinar or, or zoom or anything like that there's a real issue with zoom because of the ability to get hacked um i, mean, I don't know how to answer your question i understand your concerns i really do um, 
What about changing the time of a meeting or something to something more advantageous to you? See, right now there is no nothing advantageous to me. I mean, we're working on budget. I have four people that report to me, and I have to review their work as well. So it, it's the fact, the, the way that I could meet you halfway is to do a virtual meeting because that would save me from four hours on the road that I could be spending sure. on the state budget. We couldn't do it until after November. Excuse me? After November. I, I, yeah, I couldn't do any information and stuff until after November. Because don't you deadlines that work on schools? Yes. And th that that is due November, not 30th, but it's the tail end, I believe. Or even if you're in Columbus on teams and we're here, some hybrid. I don't know. I'm just kind of exploring options, and I think that I know. I'm thinking December before the end of the year, we kind of get a look at all of 2020, and obviously three months from now, the world's going to be totally different than it was three months ago. And um, I just I would hate to go that long um, without having formal contact. So I I think that's fair. Let me look into how to go about this. Um, I mean, it's been done. We have had commissions virtually. Um, and I'm talking like on the phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So let me, let me explore this, but let me ask this, that we um, truthfully consider the motion in case I have difficulties with the virtual meeting because I don't want to impede the appropriation process. Fine by me. That? Yeah, oh, I'd, okay. I'd make the motion to... To second? The, or the second. Okay, all right. Um, I will call the roll, on, and this is on um, delegating our authority to the financial supervisors to approve the appropriations on our behalf. Okay. Mayor Schneider. Yes. Council President Miracle. Yes. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Ms. Longenecker. Yes. Ms. Hanrahan. Yes. Okay. So we will have that in place. And what we will do is plan a tentative a, a date in December for a virtual um, commission meeting. And if I can't make that work, um, can you make it in person in December? OK, right. December 16th. Hey, that sounds good. Not really the last what did you say? Weeks. Sort of the last two weeks, but December it's not. A, 16th. December 16th. What day is that? That's a That's Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. 10 o'clock again, or? Let's tentatively plan at 10 o'clock. If we can do virtually, it might be better to do it earlier. Sure. Bef so it won't get in the way of the middle of your day, you know? So let's let's tentatively plan. Norwood, uh, December sixteenth at ten a.m. And I promise you that I will look into a virtual way of doing this, and a way in which we can um, get the public involved if they choose to do so. I mean, is it, the, it are Sunshine laws satisfied if it if the meeting is recorded and the recording is made available on a website? I think I do not believe so, simply because it precludes the public from uh, participating at the meeting. 
because the meeting's a already taken in our place. Meetings for the public to per yeah. participate. And there have been some commissions that I've had before where I get a faithful following that comes every meeting. And I've had to reserve, um, I think it's been a half an hour, mm -hmm. so that they could address items. And I do make sure that it is only items on the agenda because I don't want, I have no power in um, changing anything that somebody did at the council meeting last night that somebody didn't like. That forum is a council, not the commission. So, but I have done that. Okay. So let me look into this. Um, I know in the past, too, I mean, if somebody said, if they came here and showed up and wanted to speak, uh, the former commission leader would just say, no, you're not on the agenda. So maybe we can say you have up until two weeks before to submit something to speak, to be on the agenda. If you're not, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you cover your bases. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, let me think about that. I want to make sure that we don't, as anything in this city, I want to make sure that everyone knows it's transparent and it is available. Um, thank you, Chief, for coming. He's the only <laughs> but, but see, and that's it. The fact of the matter is, who's to, do, who's to know that somebody out of the blue might decide to make this meeting and then not be able to because it's virtual? So Might let me work on this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I I have actually school commissions have always been carved out of the finance of the sunshine laws, but technically, if I would have called in because I've been on those before too, if I would have called in from my office, I would also have to make my office available to the member of the public so that they could participate in the meeting. So I'd have to have an on-conference call. But there is an abeyance of the Sunshine Laws for the meetings due to COVID, and I need to look into that a little bit more closely, and then I'll contact our legal counsel. Sounds good. Oh. Okay. Do so you want to set up a tentative February. date for a meeting in February? Well, um, yeah, we can also do that. Yeah, we can do that too. That would give this. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I've got on my calendar is a 10th I can't do. So we could do the 17th. I know it's a national holiday for some, but. <laughs> I won't be here on the 17th. Okay. That's fine. Um, the 11th? Which is a Thursday? Is I can't that do the eleventh? Oh, never mind. Why would we want it in February? Will you want to do any financials? It, it won't matter if if they're not closed for February. By then, we'll just have January's. Marcus. Yeah. Is there any reason the city wants it in February? I'm sorry. Okay, we can do any that then. The sure. Wants it in February. Wants it in February? I'm here to do it. Any reason the city wants it in February? Okay. Um, we can can the February meeting, which would also allow the council to have enough time to go through the three readings of the financial recovery plan. Um, and then we could meet in March to discuss and approve the financial recovery plan and also to talk about year-end figures because those won't be available should we meet in December. Um, let me throw out March 9th. That's a Tuesday. A council meeting night. Okay. A lot going on um, can't do the 10th. March 11th. Tom, that okay with you? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I have conflicting appointments, uh, one of which is on the 11th. Okay. Well, what about um, you said you couldn't do this? Oh, you couldn't do the 17th. What about the 16th of March? Who, who said they couldn't do the 17th? Uh, the mayor, oh, okay. I believe. Yeah. I could do the 16th. 16 sound okay? All right, so let's try the six. Let's shoot for March 16th, 10 a.m. Should be back in council chambers by then. Fingers crossed. We'll all be vaccinated up. <laughs> I actually, the meeting I have is when I said I had something on the 10th, was set out for in person, so who knows? Just get everyone get your flu shots. I make a motion we adjourn. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Marcy seconds. Um, Mayor Schneider? Yes. Council President Miracle? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Ms. Longenecker? Yes. Ms. Hanrahan? Yes. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you.